Hi there, how are you? Johnny Daniel, Independent Demonstrator with Stampin' Up. It's Wednesday evening, seven o'clock. I'm gonna wait just a couple seconds, see who comes on. So give me a sec, I'm gonna line everything up and we will get started. So how are you tonight? There's a lot going on. If you haven't been reading, there's a lot going on in the Stampin' Up world. Give me just a second and I will share most of it with you. And I say most because I might forget something. <laughs> Gee, what a surprise, huh? Uh, let's see here. Where's our live? Oh, there it is. Okay, awesome. Alrighty, so for tonight, first off, um, trimmer blades become available tomorrow at 9 a.m. So if you um, want any, please let me know. I have a limit of three per customer that I can order three packs, which would mean six blades. Um, so please let me know ASAP on that. I'll order what I can, but honestly, if you don't tell me, you can't do it. Um, let's see, what else? What else? What else? Um, the highlights for July are going to be out shortly. I just finished them. A um, couple things to note for your calendar. Um, besides card class being the week of the 9th, 11th, or 13th, depending on what session you go to, um, team gathering will be on the 23rd. 25th is Lisa's class. 27th is the 13th anniversary party. Yay! Um, we will be doing some games and have some prizes, so you'll want to make sure to come to that. That'll be during the day, probably 10 to 1, 10 to 2, something along those lines. Um, let's see. Christmas in July, I have added. Um, I challenged my team to do this, so I figured I better do it. Um, so there will be a kickoff for Christmas, yes really, July 30th, August 1st, or August 3rd, kind of like card class, but obviously different, um, because we're going to be doing it on Christmas, and then card class for August will be the week after that. So, just some um, FYI, save the date kind of things, more will be coming soon, but just want to give you a heads up, okay? Um, bonus days are almost here, Monday they start. Um, if you don't know what a bonus day is, you spend 50 buck per $50 in product that you spend July 1st through 31st. You will get emailed to you a coupon code. It's a long code because we do a lot of these, yay. Um, that code you will be able to do as a bonus or to take off money depending on how you look at it. For every 50, you will get a $5 code. Those codes can be used in August. If you don't use them in August, they're gone. So, um, just FYI on that. So, there's no limit to that. So, get your wish list out and get going. Um, so, let's see. The other thing is, for those of you that consistently order 100 bucks a month with me, you might want to think about signing up. You don't have to do what I do. The only requirement is $300 a quarter. That is the only requirement. The classes, the team gatherings, the open houses, all that stuff is what I have decided to do because that's what fun and success per se looks like to me. So it's really up to you on what you decide to do. Only requirement, $300 a quarter. And if you drop, you can sign up two days later. There's no negative impact within your reputation of the company or credit-wise. So just FYI on that. Um, there is a bonus right now. Well, July 1st to August 31st. When you sign up, you will get an additional $30 worth of product. So instead of $125, you'll get $155 with your $99 sign up. No shipping, just tax. We can't waive that. Um, gotta love it. So about $108, you're going to get $155 worth of product. And then on top of it, you're going to get a $10 coupon next month, August. Yeah. 
um, that you'll be able to use. So kind of cool, right? So if you're thinking about it, it's definitely something you want to deal with. All right, so I'm going to flip you around. Hi, Cheryl. How are you? I'm going to flip you around and we will get creating. First, I have to clean my space up a little bit before we get to creating because, well, I have done my share of creating a pile here. So we will get through it. I'm almost there. Sorry, guys. We will get through it and figure it out. Okay. So let me adjust a little bit. I've got some big pieces here. That's why it's a little bit different than normal. Let me scooch, scooch and do and all that fun stuff. All right. So what I've got here is I've got copper embossing powder. I have got clear embossing powder. I've got a heat tool. I've got the Versamark pad. I have got stays on that have just been recently re-inked, which is why they're open. Yeah, I have pre-cut gears from the Garage Gear dies. Um, these are done in silver foil and then put through the Xyron machine. Okay. Um, I have got the bricks and mortar 3D embossing folder because like the title said, you know, hello, I was going to show you the embossing plate. Um, I have got a little bit of black mat and some more silver foil. And then I've got a couple samples from last night's little gathering. And I'm going to flip this. Hold on. Um, so we've got quite a bit going on right in my little station here. Okay. So I'm going to show you this. I use the scripted. Yeah, exactly. So we're making like a steampunk card. Tara was excited. So we're going to see how this turns out. Um, I saw a sample of it on Pinterest. Uh, don't all great stories start with I saw this on Pinterest. Anyways, so I saw a sample of it on Pinterest and then thought, oh, I can make that better. We'll see how this turns out. So in the meantime, I want to show you a couple samples of the scripted that um, I did last night with our team meeting. Okay, so that's another advantage of team is you um, get me at least once more a month for ideas and different things and have um, exclusive access to me or priority access to me because they're the first ones that get called back. Alrighty, so this is the scripted and this is in Pretty Peacock. So I just want to show you the difference. This is all done with the embossing plate and we'll do it in just a second. And then this is the silver foil. Okay. And then this is that gorgeous vellum from the Perennial Essence set. Now on the back, look at that. Looks pretty normal, right? And then on the front, that wax finish really comes out. So just play with your paper is all I can say. Okay. So for tonight, we are going to do brick. Yes. And we're going to play with this new embossing plate. Now, a couple things with this. For one, it's thicker than our normal ones. It's blue. So we are not cutting on this. I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to put a Sharpie and put no cut, no dies. Because I know something will happen. But this is only for embossing folders. Okay. The thickness um, is perfect for our new in the catalog um, 3D embossing folders. So that is what this is designed for as a fix it. If you want to mess with about five to seven, depending on your machine, five to seven pieces of cardstock underneath and hope they don't slide out, go for it. Um, if you don't do it often, I would suggest starting there. This is 10 bucks, so it's another 10 bucks. But I will say, perfect image every time, even better than before. So, just saying, I am completely happy, but you may not be. You know, 
It's all personal preference. I can just show you what there is. Okay. Alrighty. So I have got my standard platform here. I have got... Well, I was going to have my clear plate, but I don't need that, right? I just need my blue one. And, of course, the embossing folder, the bricks and mortar, and my silver, okay? So when you're doing this, you're going to look at this and go, here's the Stampin' Up! logo. Here's the copyright, okay? So the copyright is the back of it. The Stampin' Up! logo is the front. So when you feel this, this is going to feel more recessed. This is going to feel more bumpy. So what you want is opposite of what you're thinking. You want the recess to be the front of your card because what it's going to do is it's going to push and that paper is going to go out because it's down. It's going to allow that room for it to go in. Okay? So it's opposite of what you're thinking. I know. It's hard but it's what it is. So the other thing is, I don't know if you saw my technique tip today with Wacky Wednesday, but the newer ones all have this nice black line to help you line up. If you don't have it, grab a Sharpie and a T-square and get it done, okay? So I know I've done that on several of mine. Thankfully, I don't have any old ones because I'm a demonstrator and I keep current, but I do have a couple laying around. All right, so even if you don't use the line completely, what I like to do is close this and then look. I'm a little crooked, if you're wondering. Yeah, and I'm still a little crooked. So what I do is I just close this real quick and then kind of line up against this line and see how straight I am, if that helps you. So, because this is square, you don't have to really pay attention to what way it's going in. Generally, I like my open end to go in first, but hey, to each his own, right? So, and then I'm going to put this blue guy on top and spin it around. A good checking point is when you push it through. If your handle moves, then you've got it. Okay. So we've got that going on. And I'm getting my stack done. So, there's my texture. There's my bricks and, brick and mortar embossing. Okay? So, we're going to grab this and throw this down. Give me a half a second to come back. All right. So, great texture on that, right? Okay. So, what we are doing here, and you're probably going, where's all this copper coming from? But we are going to get there. Okay, so I am grabbing my gears off of my Xyron. Now, if you do this fast, it is going to spider web on you. Okay, and then it'll be all over the place. So you want to go kind of slow, especially since it's foil. You don't want that all over the place, right? Okay, so it looks like I'm just going to have to do one set, which means I'm going to leave the other set for another time. Okay, and I've got some stickies on there, so I'm going to just throw a tiny bit of embossing to get that sticky off, blow it, and there we go. Okay, so here comes the fun part, all right? So we are grabbing our stays on, and you're saying, what in the world are you doing? Well, I'm going to show you on my scratch paper. I have just re-inked this, so what I'm going to do is lightly streak it, okay, and I'm going to do this over my, my bricks in all different directions, and what this is going to do is allow a tiny bit of vintage, retro, um, to come out. And I guess that all sank in because there's not a lot of that coming out. So that might be a good thing. But I am going to get some more on here. Okay. Now if you wanted to do the pieces separately you could do that. But honestly I don't think it's really going to matter after you see what we're going to do to this thing. Okay. <laughs> yes. Really. All right. So we are taking our 
stays on and putting it to the side okay and I am grabbing my copper embossing powder now you can always grab as many different colors as you want you want them to be more metallic or clear so I have got copper and I've got clear okay and you'll see what I'm doing in just a second here so I've allowed that to dry for a half a sec and what I'm doing is very sloppily, I am doing Versamark, okay? Now what that's gonna allow is for the embossing powder to stick, right? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just go kind of all over the place, not consistent, and I'll show you why in a sec. So I've got some copper going on here okay and then what I'm gonna do is come across here and do a tiny bit of clear as well you need to be a little bit careful with this really tap off your extra in between and here's why because you don't want a whole bunch of copper bits in your clear, right? So there you go. So you really don't want to top it off a ton in the tray because then you will get all kinds of fun stuff. All right, so what I'm gonna do is start heating this up and you'll see it start to melt. If we've missed any spots or want to add, we can always do the Versamark again and do another step. So we're just going to see what this looks like, okay? You want to make sure if you're using a table that is not heat resistant, like a wood, like I have plastic tablecloths, you do not want to do heat gun directly on it because it will melt your tablecloths, okay? Or it will put a nice burn mark into your... Um, wood table so you don't want to do that you want to make sure that everything you've got is heat resistant if you want to leave it down okay and I'm gonna finish that corner before I put my finger there yes if you haven't realized I've got a couple fingers that I think are permanently um, not scarred but don't have much feeling we'll just say so yes, I um, definitely have my share of what my aunt would call toaster fingers because she had two fingers that she always pulled toast out of the toaster and so she called them toaster fingers. So, so we are just getting this to melt. You'll know with embossing powder when the crystals come together and melt, that's when you're done. If your paper starts to change color, you need to turn it off and leave it alone for a while because that means you are in the middle of trying to burn it and burn your house down, and we don't want that. So don't do that. But once those crystals start melting, that's when you know you're done. So I'm just giving it a half a second here. I think I'm about done. I've got this one corner still left. Okay. So that is my steampunk mat, but I want it a tiny bit thicker. So what I'm going to do, and I want some various colors to come out and that kind of thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my stays on and I'm actually going to grab a refill because I need some more juice. Go figure, huh? So what we're going to do is take this lid off here. Um, and then I'm just going to drop a little bit down and make it go. You can also 
use the back of a plastic spoon to push this. You can also use a bone folder. I wouldn't recommend a bone folder only because when it gets stained with your ink, you have a stained bone folder. It doesn't come out of, of it, you know, like onto your cardstock, but it's still just, I mean, to me, it just doesn't look like you've kept your stuff nice. So just what it is. All right. So I'm just going to grab this because there's a little too much there and I'm going to grab and we're just creating layers. Okay. So we're going to put a little more black. We're going to put a little more Versamark and we could do this probably up to about six times before your paper starts warping and doing, but honestly, I think you'll be okay. So dry, dry, dry. All right. I'm not being patient. So we're just gonna put a little bit and keep going. Okay. So I'm going to dump some copper down and this is probably going to be my last layer just for the sake of TV, shall we say? <laughs> so I'm going to tap some of that off and we're going to go back to heating. Go figure, huh? And basically you're going to do this until you're happy with the results. When you have enough black, when you have enough copper, when you have, you know, and then you could have copper and silver and, you know, any kind of antique gold or anything like that, or you can do color. It really is up to you on the kind of look you want. But I just wanted to show you how different foil looks embossed vice a normal cardstock. Okay. So I'm going to flip this around and get this powder going. I don't know if you can see that starting to change on me. So the main thing you want to do is make sure to have your stays on be dry before you start heating it because otherwise you're going to start smelling it. I actually don't, which I'm surprised, but that's just something you want to make sure of before you start heating is that it's actually dry. Okay. Now in other climates, other than the desert, it takes a little while longer. And I will say that out of experience because I've lived in other places. So you just want to make sure that you're good. Okay. All right. So that's what I'm looking at now. You can keep going with this and you can keep playing with this. But honestly, I'm just going to put a tiny bit more black in this and then I will tie it in later with um, I'm getting all kinds of ink on me I'll tie it in later with a um, set of words and all that so be looking tomorrow for um, the finished project okay so I'm going to be using tear tape to glue this on and the only reason is I don't want this curled up. I don't want bunging to happen, you know, all those fun kind of things. So I just really want it to stick on there. And because I've got a little bit of warping because it's foil and it's just what it does, you just want to have a little bit of a more heavy duty adhesive so that way you don't have surprises later. So I've used our tear tape um, and we'll see what comes of this and should be fine. Come on. And if you can't get it, you push it back down and the warmth of your finger will usually get that adhesive to stick where you want it to and you'll be good. Okay. You got to pick which way is up, sideways, or whatnot. And that is my steampunk card. So you'll see the finished product tomorrow, but I just wanted to show you what I've got so far. You couldn't even tell that it was glued on, can you? So just a really cool technique 
but you do want to make sure that your black is completely dry before you do the verse mark because otherwise you will have a pad that looks like that at the end. Now, that stays on will stay in there forever, but you want to make sure that you don't destroy your pads because you put too much in there and it gets stiff and then doesn't work. So, but not the point. I've done worse and I'll probably do better and it will be fine. So that is our steampunk base for tonight. See the finished product tomorrow. And that is all I have for you tonight. So stampingwithjohnny.com, follow me. And thank you for showing up tonight. Have a great night. Bye-bye. <laughs>